could read one of my most favorite stories today. It is a different version of the three bear story that we read the other day. A version means like a different kind, so it's a little bit the same, but also a little bit different. So remember we talked about how fairy tales have some things the same in them? So we'll see what kinds of things are the same in this story and what things are different. Now before we start that story, I just wanted to review what happened in the three bear story we read the other day. So our characters in that story, remember, were Goldilocks. See if you can help me with these characters, friends. Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and, of course, Baby Bear. And we're going to go through what happens in the story. So does anybody remember the setting of that story, which means where that story happened? It was at the bear's house. So that story happened at the bear's house. And what happened first? What did Goldilocks do first when she got to that, to their house? She ate some porridge, which is kind of like oatmeal, right friends? So she eats the porridge. And that was after all the bears left. And then we just had Goldilocks. She goes to their house. She eats their porridge and she says, one is too hot. And the medium sized one was too cold. And baby bear's porridge was just right. And she ate all of it up. Then where did she go next friends? Did she go to their beds or did she go to their chairs? She did go to their chairs. She sits in the chairs. She sat in Papa Bear's chair and she said it was too hard. Then she sat in Mama Bear's chair and it was too soft. And then she sat in Baby Bear's chair and she said it was just right. And then what happened to the chair, friends? Oh, it broke, oh, it broke. And then she said, I'm tired. So she went right up and she went to sleep in their beds. And then what happened after she fell asleep in baby bear's bed. Then the three bears came home and she said, ah, and she left their house. She ran as fast as she could and they never saw her again. Right friends? So today our story is, are you guys ready? My friends that love dinosaurs are gonna love this story because it is Goldilocks and the three dinosaurs oh it's so funny this is the silliest story ever i love this story it's so funny so as we're reading this story see if there's anything the same that happens and anything that is different and we'll see what kind of characters we have in this story and see if it's the same or different from our Goldilocks and the Three Bears story. Now we already know it's not Goldilocks and the Three Bears, it's Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs. So it's still three, right? We have three characters, but this time it's the three dinos. Now my friends that love dinos, I know are gonna be loving this story. Okay, let's get started. Oh, and this story's author is Mo Willems. So they did the words and the pictures. And I love the front of this book. It says it has a bunch of different titles for the book and they're all crossed off like, like Goldilocks and the Three Chickens, Goldilocks and the Three Lions, Goldilocks and the Three Mosquitoes. That's so silly. I love this story, friends. Goldilocks and the Three Giraffes. What kind of silly Goldilocks story do you think you would make up? Goldilocks and the three kitties? That would be my story, I think. Okay, let's get started. There, who do you think that is? That must be Goldilocks. So we already know we have one character that's the same, right friends? Goldilocks, she was in the first story and she's also in this story. Once upon a time, there were three dinosaurs. Papa Dinosaur, Mama Dinosaur, and some other dinosaur who happened to be visiting from Norway. 
And this sign right here says, Home Sweet Dinosaur Home. There he is, they said. Now is he baby dinosaur? Nope, they said he's some other dinosaur visiting. One day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, positioned their chairs, just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding in, at varying temperatures. There he is, Who, that's Papa Bear. I mean, <laughs> Papa Dinosaur making his chocolate pudding. And if you look in that chocolate pudding bowl, what do you see, friends? What tool? A thermometer that measures temperature, and he's got some ice. So he's probably trying to make the different, he's probably trying to make the different bowls, different temperatures. Hmm, I wonder why he would be doing that. Oh boy, said Papa Dinosaur in his loud, booming voice. It is finally time to leave and go to the, uh, someplace else. Yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens by our unlocked home while we are, uh, somewhere else. And she says, hee hee hee, I think something fishy is going on here. The other dinosaur made a loud noise that sounded like a big evil laugh, but was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. And he said, <laughs> The three dinosaurs went someplace else and were definitely not hiding in the woods waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. <laughs> sure enough, Five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came traipsing along. And the, oh, I see somebody hiding in there. <laughs> and the signs say, 0.2 miles to a very nice home. And this one says, getting closer. Just then the forest boomed with a, what could have been a dinosaur yelling, gotcha. But I'm pretty sure it was just the wind. The loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded kind of like, Be patient, Papa Dinosaur, the trap is not yet sprung. But that could have been a rock falling or a squirrel. <laughs> Either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. For example, Goldilocks never listened to warnings about the dangers of barging into strange, enormous houses. So as soon as Goldilocks came across a strange, enormous house, she barged right in. And the mat in front says, welcome. And then underneath it says, tee tee. Inside, Goldilocks immediately smelled three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Mmm, said Goldilocks, that chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way up to the top of that counter. Then Goldilocks noticed a very tall ladder that just happened to be there and certainly wasn't left on purpose. <laughs> Do you think, friends, you think they did leave that on purpose? I think so. Goldilocks climbed up the ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls of chocolate pudding. The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but Goldilocks ate it all anyway because, hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? Raise your hand if you like chocolate pudding. The second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold, but who cares about temperature when you've got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. Now this bowl says PD, so I wonder if that stands for P Papa Dinosaur. And this one says M MD. So what do you think that stands for? Mama Dinosaur, maybe? The third bowl of chocolate pudding was just right. But Goldilocks was on such a roll by then, she hardly noticed. Look at, she ate all the pudding. So what was the same about this part? We know that Goldilocks in the bear story ate some porridge, so that is different. But were there three bowls? Yes, and were there three bowls in this story? 
Mm -hmm. But in the other story, they were size, different sizes, right? In this one, it just said enormous bowls. And did she say just right in this story? Mm -hmm. And she did in this story as well. So we'll see if she says it again. Soon, Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons, which, by the way, are totally not the favorite things in the whole world for hungry dinosaurs. Tired and groggy, oh, Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room. So she climbed down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. Did we have chairs in the bear story? Yes, we did. I wonder what she's going to say about these chairs. The first chair was too tall. The second chair was too tall. <laughs> so they're too tall because they're dinosaurs. They're huge, right? But the third chair was too tall. Goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chair. So she hiked over to the bedroom. When she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big. What is going on around here? Groaned the exhausted girl. The bears that live here must be nuts. Is there really bears that live here? Just then, the room filled with a loud, booming noise that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few more minutes and she'll be asleep. Delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons are yummier when they're rested. I wonder who said that. Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything had to hear that. I see somebody out the window in the story, look. Oh, who is that? Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. Hey, she told herself, this, is some, some, this isn't some bear's house. This is some dinosaur's house. Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran to the back door and she got out of there. So she finally realized this isn't a bear's house. This is a dino's house. Just then, a loud plane flew by, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling, No! Or charge! Or the Norwegian expression for chili bonbon time! Suddenly, and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door. But they were too late. Hmm. I see something on this page that looks like a character from another story that we might have heard before. <clears throat> Do you see him right there? That looks like Pigeon from the Pigeon stories, and that is because they, those stories have the same author as the story. Mo Willems likes to likes to read or write and make really silly stories. That's why I like him. Goldilocks was gone, and all that was left in the house were three disappointed dinosaurs. Hmm. What does disappointed mean? It's kind of like sad. Things didn't turn out the way you thought they would. And this sign says, the end. And on this page we see Goldie and who does that look like? The bears. And the sign says, the moral of the story is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. <laughs> that means the lesson from the story because was Goldie in the wrong story? Yeah, she's usually in the three bear story, but this was a silly story, so she was with the three dinosaurs. And the moral or the lesson for the dinosaurs is lock the back door, because which door did Goldilocks escape out of? The back door, that's great. And there they are, they have their key. They're probably saying, oh, we should have locked this back door. I love that story, friends. It is so silly, and I hope you enjoyed it. So some things that were 
the same or that we had bowls of food, but it wasn't porridge, it was chocolate pudding. And she also, there was chairs in that story, but she didn't sit in them because they were all too tall. That's right, because they're dinosaurs. And were there beds in this story too? Yes, but they, she didn't um, try to climb up in them because again, they were too big, right? And at the end of the three bears story, what happened to Goldilocks? She escaped and ran out of the house, right? Did this Goldilocks um, run out of the house too at the end of the story? Yeah. So there are some things that are different and some things that are the same about these stories. So maybe you have your own, you might have your own Goldilocks story at home. I have one more that I think I might share with you, um, but we'll see if we have time for that another day. So there I, was, I had one more thing that I wanted to show you today, friends, and that is a game. Hey friends, so what I have here is a container, an empty container that I found, and it has the, the, the um, number cards that I sent you in your first packet. If you cut these up, you can use them for games. And one game that I like to do at school a lot is I like to hide the numbers. So that's always a fun game. So you could hide them around your house. Um, you could hide them in your living room. You could hide them in your dining room. You could put them in a bin of stuff like this. So what I did was I found some oatmeal because in the first story, the bears had bowls of porridge, which is kind of like oatmeal. So I put the cards in a bowl or a container of oats. And what you can do is you just search and find and we pick a card and we've been working on our teen numbers. So I put just the teen numbers in this um, bucket. So I wanna see if my friends at home, while we play this game for a few minutes, if you can tell me the number before I say it. So see if you can race me to tell me the number. Okay, ready friends? Oh, and after we find the number, we're gonna trace it on one of those tracing papers that I gave you. <laughs> so if you're just using markers or crayons with this, you can just write over it as many times as you want to. So even if you already wrote on it, you could use it again. You could use a different color marker or crayon. Are you ready friends? Ready, I'm gonna pick cards and you see if you can race me to tell me what the number is. Ready? Oh, this one's a tricky one. Tricky, tricky. It has a one with a two. And if we look at our 10 frames, we know it has a 10 and two on the bottom. So if we're not sure what it is, we could count and see how many. Okay, so take a look. We have 10 up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Good job. So I'm going to trace my 12, the one first, around, down, and back for the two. And we have our 12. Okay. Let's see what else we can find in our oatmeal bowl. Ooh, what is this one? What do we have here? If we cover up that one, what number do we have there? Eight. So this must be, if it has a one in front, 18. Very good. Make a snake and do not wait. Go right back up and make an eight for our 18. Super, let's do a couple more. Got my oatmeal. This would be pretty silly if this was a bowl, a bucket of chocolate pudding, wouldn't it friends? And we couldn't use our cards in it. All right, what about this one? We have a one in front and uh, we cover up that one. We have a uh, six, so we have 10 up top and six underneath, so it must be six, 16, 16, good job friends. A one with a down to a loop, six rolls a hoop for 16. Okay, let's do one more. Let me see. Hmm, this one likes to trick my friends quite a bit. What do 
do we have here? This is a tricky one because it does not say teen at the end. We have a one with a one. And if we look at our 10 frame, we have, if all the, if all the spots are full on one rectangle, it means it's 10 and one more. What comes after 10, friends? 11! 11! A one with a one, that is 11. So we're gonna move this down. Okay, so friends, um, I would love to see pictures of your bare fork paintings if you did those yesterday. That was super fun, easy um, little project. And um, if you liked my dinosaur book, just give me a little shout out and tell me that you liked it. And I would love to see my friends playing number games like this at home too. That is great. And make sure we're playing outside and reading stories together. That's the most important thing. So, yeah. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye, friends.